Hi, this is Miss Linton, and this is the final review of big idea number one. Enduring Yay. Understanding 1D. Say hi. Hi. The origin of living systems is explained by natural processes. So this is saying that we could figure out how life could have come about. We don't know for sure, but we can do experiments that will support various claims, right? I think there's a question on that in your last test. Okay, two approaches to study the origin of life. Bottoms up or top down. Um, I would like the person with the darkest shirt. You're all paired up. Yeah, you two need to be paired up. Darkest shirt. I don't know. Figure it out. You do bottoms up. Light shirt. You do top down. Go. Bottoms up. So small molecules and they polarize to two ideas. Replicator first. So this is started from the bottom, now we're here, right? This is just working it up that way, and you can look at ways that could happen. I mean, remember, Oprah proposed a hypothesis, right? Remember, we, we talked about this. The early gases on the, in the environment are probably ones that came out of a volcano, right? <laughs> right? And then we talked about those, those molecules being in the ocean. And we talked about energy coming from lightning, lightning. <laughs> UV radiation. Do you know? I don't want you to sit down and get your pants. Oh, okay. This is like <laughs> That's in gets from English. No, 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 show her, show her. Oh, <laughs> but everywhere. Oh my god. Okay. Thunder and lightning. Right? Lightning and the thunder. And also molten magma. Right? So that's that's starting from the bottom up. Okay? Top down, just start deconstructing life, right? Down to the simplest units. Look, use your your similarities in DNA to establish who your Luke is. It doesn't matter which way you go, we're trying to understand the phylogeny. And I primarily, how could life have come about? And then what are all the interconnections between life? Okay, and, and we know this, right? Okay, so the Earth is about 4.6 billion years old. We did this. Um, Earth's atmosphere outgassing, we already talked about that. If we analyze that primordial soup, come on, that's super cute. That's super cute. Okay, what was in it, and it, it has it what's listed in here, but I went over those gases with you, what was in the early atmosphere. What is, what is missing that we currently have? Oxygen. Oxygen. So what kind of environment was it? Reducing. What's the significance of a reducing environment? It's conducive to? Building, right? Oxygen oxidizes things. It breaks things down. Just like you need oxygen for a fire to burn something, if there was no oxygen, then the environment is conducive. It can donate electrons and build. Bye, sweetheart. Bye. 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 Remember our steps um, to life? Remember this stair step? See if you can ping pong back and forth. Light shirt goes first. What is listed in each one of these places? So you could like explain it. If you were writing an essay or trying to construct an argument, go ahead. So Quietly, so only your, your bye buddy here. And how, how do they make the jump? Talk about how they make the jump. How do you go from this step to this step? Okay, I got it. Oh, yeah, and then the four types of organic molecules. Um, they, they build, make proteins, carbohydrates, and they Okay, does this part sound familiar? Okay. So we, we listed thunder, lightning, molten magma, all those things. Not thunder. I'm just doing that because of the song. Okay? And that's how you get your organic molecules. Was there evidence of this? Who did an experiment that showed evidence of this within just a matter of a little over a week? Miller. Miller. Okay? Miller did that experiment. It was Oprah and <laughs> Boom. And Oprah is the one who hypothesized it, but Miller had the capabilities to make that happen. And sure enough, he got all of those amino acids and sugars. Then how would those get together? Well, clay can act as a catalyst. Molecules are on clay. Hot proteins, cooling, concentrating, evaporation, the same energy that was there that can help you bring, build your macromolecules. But here's the big step right here. 
going from inorganic to what? That's a very big step. Now we're just hooking those organic molecules together and then eventually to build a cell. When we look at things like Oprah's class, or I'm sure that's in my presentation in a second, I'm just already talking about it. But Oprah's class, or droplets, or Fox's protonoid microspheres, these early spheres that we can generate right now when hot proteins cool um, in an aqueous solution, then you can get these spheres of protein or lipid to make spheres of fat, Oprah's class, or droplets. What's our current cell membrane made out of? Fat and proteins, right? So some amalgamation of that could create a barrier. A barrier is, barrier is significant, because once you have a barrier, what's happening inside can be different than what's happening what? Outside. So that means you can build things inside where one influences another, influences another, and build these complex structures, right? And our first cell was probably a prokaryotic cell. But, but we know what's the key stuff we want to protect? Our nucleic acids, perhaps? So those cells where they had a membrane folding in and surrounding their DNA, right, and protected it, those would have an advantage over others whose DNA was unprotected, like in prokaryotic cells, right? And then those those organelles, when you fold it in, you could fold some of it, you could fold your make your vesicles. And we looked at things like like uh, your Golgi apparatus could just be an infolding of membranes. ER could just be an infolding of membranes. The, the tricky organelles are things like mitochondria and chloroplasts because why? They have their own DNA, which happens to be circular. Their own double, they have a double membrane. They have what? Ribosomes, they're self-replicating, right? They can make their own proteins. That's because they were probably one prokaryote going to live in to make that prokaryote now a eukaryote because it has membrane and closed organelles. And that is called the Boom. Okay, you totally got that. Theories. All right, so the first evolution that had to occur, we're not even to the point of evolving life. We're just, this is the chemical evolution part. The chemical evolution had to occur before the biological evolution, right? Because to build the biology part, we needed to have organic molecules. So the chemical ev evolution, you had to increase in complexity. So we had this kind of energy and we want, we have the early gases on earth. We could build these monomers. These are organic. But we're still in chemical evolution because now we've got to use these monomers to build what? Polymers, Polymers. exactly. Okay, um, and there, yay, UV light radiation, we know that. Miller's experiment, we went over that. Polymer evolution. So we could build our carbohydrates, our lipids, our proteins, and our nucleic acid. Why are proteins and nucleic acids so critical? Because proteins act as catalysts, enzymes, for chemical reactions, right? So you need a protein in order to have chemical reactions. Then you also need nucleic acids because that stores your what? Your genetic code. And what can act both enzymatically and nucleic acidly? RNA, right? So more than likely RNA, because it can act like ribozymes, right? When you're doing protein synthesis, it can act like an enzyme and it can store genetic information. It probably was the first nucleic acid that a cell depended on. And DNA potentially just evolved for storage of RNA to protect it. Because RNA is single-stranded, so it can be of use with tRNAs and rRNAs and ribosomes to build proteins, right? But if you want, you're, you're vulnerable, right? We talked about small interfering RNAs, right? Those kind of things are vulnerable. vulnerable. So why not make a DNA copy Right, that is slightly different, so it's not going to run into the same problems as RNA, and not only make it a DNA copy, but make it not single-stranded, but double-stranded, and stored in a little lock box of the nucleus. Right, and that's probably how DNA evolved after RNA. Make sense? Okay, survival of the fittest, baby. So Sydney Fox said protein first about the proteinoids and protein. Uh, the microspheres forming, we talked about that. Um, Karen Smith, who's not really, it's really a man. RNA and proteins formed at the same time because clay can act as a catalyst because you have iron and zinc in there. We, I reviewed that just a second ago. And probably RNA first because RNA can act as both an enzyme, like a protein would now, right? And as um, a nucleic acid to store information. That's probably most likely. 
Then we have protocell evolution. We don't, we don't even have a living thing yet. We have early cells, a protocell. It is not considered a cell until it is, has a genetic code and it's self-replicating, right? Otherwise, it's just some structures, right? We wouldn't consider, like, just straight up, if you ripped endoplasm reticulum out, endoplasm reticulum, it's got some membrane, you know? It might even have some RNA on it and nucleic acid, but it is not self -replicating self-contained, um, it is not, uh, it can't self-replicate, right? So you have to be able to do all of those things. So, oh, 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 what probably came first, autotrophs or heterotrophs? Uh, heterotrophs, because it's easier to just burn nutrients, break them down and release energy out of bonds than it is to build and then break, right? See what plants do. Plants build the sugars and then they burn the sugars in their mitochondria, right? So it's easier just to be a heterotroph where you take nutrients and break them down. But when nutrient A ran out, anybody who could take B and convert it into A would be a, a selected for. So if you're running out of A, but oh, I can use B. Then B would be in low supplies, whoever could take C and convert it into B and then convert B into A, until you work your way back all the way to where you're getting energy from the sun and you're building organic molecules from inorganic molecules. You all right? Yeah, so heterotrophs first and then autotrophs. Now, of those heterotrophs, probably anaerobic respiration had to happen first. Why? No oxygen, no oxygen until when? Yeah. About how long ago? Yeah. 2.3 billion years ago. You know how I remember it? 4, 3, 2, 1. How old is the um, Earth? Somewhere in the 4 billion, right? First fossil is? Three billion, right? Somewhere in the three. Two, oxygen, revolution, revolution in the ones, endosymbiotic hypothesis. Four, three, two, one. Ah. Oh. Oh. Are we going to need to know, like, the Mesozoic Yeah. Cenozoic now to 66. Cenozoic now to 66 million years ago. Remember Cenozoic, center of your world now, drive your car, 60. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, 66, 65 million years ago. Then oh, Mesozoic oh. is in the? Middle, 65 till about when school's out? 200 and somewhere in there. And then before Mesozoic is Paleozoic, and that's from the beginnings of the Mesozoic, right? You go back to dinner time, right? Dinner time, school's out, drive your car. Those are your three end caps. Okay. You can review that. Yeah. Okay, so let's look right here. Who does glycolysis? All cells. Where do they do it? In the cytoplasm. Does it matter if you're a prokaryote or a eukaryote? No. Yeah. Okay, you can do glycolysis. So your end result, glucose gets broken down, series of 10 steps to get a couple of ATP and a couple of reduced NAD. Yay, two ATP. Sweet. However, I'm going to have a finite amount of NAD. So I, if I reduce it, I have to have a way to oxidize it so I can reduce it again so I can get ATP. I have to have NAD to reduce in order to get ATP. So the oxidation of NAD, if we're going to oxidize NAD, we must reduce something else. You know what we're going to have to reduce? What did we end up with? Two pyruvic acids. acid. We're going to reduce the pyruvic acid either into lactic acid, muscle sore, or we're going to convert it into alcohol and some CO2, right? <laughs> um, either way, we oxidize our NAD, right? So that is the second part of um, when you do glycolysis, it needs to be followed by fermentation in order to oxidize your NAD, and that probably happened first, right? Later, when you add oxygen, you, that meant you could fur further oxidize the glucose. We, we oxidized it into pyruvic acid, right, and reduced NAD. And then we could oxidize it some more into acetyl-CoA, oxidize it some more through the Krebs cycle, and take all that reduced NAD and harvest that to make ATP. Well, if we have reduced NAD, we have to oxidize it, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to give our electrons to the electron transport, transport chain. chain, but we need to give those electrons to somebody with low energy. Who's going to take them? I know, oxygen for me, water. water, right? That's cellular respiration. Yay. Yay. <laughs> OK, central dogma, you know all about that. OK, DNA comes from other DNA. That's DNA replication. When would I do DNA replication? During the S stage. If I'm making more cells, either by mitosis or meiosis. And yes, during the S stage interface. Okay? 
Now, no, I'm cool. Um, and then transcription is when you go from DNA to RNA. Why would I want to do that? I need to unpack my DNA and get an RNA copy so I can go build some proteins during the third step, which is translation. Where will I build my proteins? On my little work bench called? Ribosome. Proteins are made out of? Amino acids. Who will bring those amino acids? TRNA. What does T stand for? Transfer. That's right. How does each transfer no RNA know where to land? Its anticodon and its feet has to match the codon on the mRNA. How did the mRNA know what codon to be? That was back in the? DNA. DNA. Is all DNA transcribed and translated? No. No. What's in DNA that are not transcribed and translated? Introns. Introns. What? Cap and tail. Cap and tail. What else? Cap and tail is on the mRNA, but keep going. What else? Transcription factors where they land, activator regions, promoters, right? All of those. Telomeres on the end, right? All of those. There's those intervening um, sequences, right, that are spacers. Um, failed attempts at evolution, yes. But that DNA that is transcribed and translated is going to be found on the mRNA, right? Mm, S stands for messenger. messenger. Where did it get its message from? The DNA. But we could make an argument that the RNA had the message all along, just stored it as DNA, and then brought it back out into the RNA. Yeah? Ah, ha, ha. Okay. You got it, though, didn't you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, so this is just showing you the development of that. Early Earth, inorganic, this is all chemical evolution. Small organic molecules, macromolecules, oh, we're starting to form a cell. Okay, biological evolution. Okay. Oh, horizontal gene transfer. Let's talk about that. Go ahead, oldest bio buddy. Talk about these three scenarios right here. Well, okay. You're so older, why do you think this is called horizontal instead of vertical? Why is this vertical? Why is it vertical? Because it has to be horizontal. Did you make any babies? Because sex is like this, right? Did you make any babies? Let's talk about this. Horizontal. Oh that, that went downhill fast. <laughs> We're really sorry, but it feels like a Friday, even though it's Tuesday. Okay, come back to me. The tiredness. What? What is today? I said it feels like a Friday. I thought yesterday was Wednesday. Okay, back to me. Transduction, right? Are there any offspring made? No. No, that would be vertical transfer. Making offspring. Think about like a, um, pun in, um, not a pun in, sorry. Pedigree. That's what I wanted to say. Pedigree. Make a pedigree. Yes. So it's binary division then a form of vertical. Well, you're making more offspring. So yeah, that would be my guess more vertical. Yeah. Because you're making another cell. Here, you're just getting new DNA by a virus, getting new DNA by transformation, which is what you're doing tomorrow, or conjugation. You're having sex, but you haven't had any offspring. You're just exchanging DNA. Yes. I'm kind of confused between like horizontal and vertical. Is horizontal just um, How many cells do I have when I'm done? One. So it was just an exchange. Okay. I give you ten dollars, you give me two fives. Okay. It's a horizontal exchange. Okay, so horizontal is just exchanging genetic material. Yep. And vertical is making more cells. more okay. cells. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're passing that DNA to your offspring. Here, you're just changing the DNA that you have. Okay. Either by using a virus, picking up DNA from your environment, or exchanging with another cell. But they're not making any offspring yet. Okay. But this would be, conjugation would be a form of sexual reproduction, but you just haven't made new cells yet that have changed. But you are exchanging that DNA. Okay. Binary fission straight up would be asexual reproduction, right? Like cloning of it. All right. Oh, Whoa. okay. Oh, I'll take a look at this. Ping pong through. That'll probably be the best way to do. Um, youngest bio buddy, listen, your oldest bio buddy will do the odds. Youngest will do the evens. Go, work your way down. Okay. Oh, <laughs> 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 
This stands horizontal gene transfer oh, okay. versus okay. vertical. Okay. We're doing five right now, right? We're doing five right now. What is this called? Direct uptake of foreign DNA. What's that called? Transformation. Movement by a bacteriophage misspelled. What is that called? Transduction. Cell to cell contact. Contact. Conjugation. Does that help? Horizontal, vertical. Okay, Swedish. I'm worried about us finishing. Can I please finish? And then we come back? Okay. All right. All right. Fossils. Ooh, fossils. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about this before. Um, relative versus absolute dating. Relative dating, I'm saying whatever layers on top are younger. Layers on the bottom are older. Right. And you can use things like index fossils where they're only found during a certain time in your relative dating because you know if it's only found 450 million years ago, I always think it's like 30, 450 million years ago, then the ones above have to be younger than 450 million and the ones below it have to be older than 450 million years, right? So that's relative dating combined with absolute dating. Remember, absolute dating is knowing how fast an isotope breaks down combined with knowing how what percentage of an isotope you have, right, normally right now. So if that isotope, if you pick up a rock and there's very little of that isotope in that, you know it's been breaking down. And if we know the rate of decay, we know how old it is. Okay, if you expect 10% of a certain rock sample to be an isotope, but you find this rock and there's only 5% of it in there, right, then we know half of it has, has been lost, right? We broke it down to, and then we just need to know how fast does it take it to do that? 10 minutes, 10 days. 10,000 years, 30,000 years. If I know how fast it breaks down, I know how old that rock specimen is, okay? So I'm combining, when I have to look at this to, to really know the age, it's how fast does it break down and how much would I have expected if it was new as of today, right? And how much is left over. So then from that, this is what you're talking about, so we look at the geologic time scale, right? Formation of the Earth, all of this time is Precambrian, 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 right? Still Precambrian, 10 o'clock at night, it's Paleozoic. Yes? On the Sorry, on the general times, but I bet you'll be able to figure it. If you can remember 65 million, right? 65 speed limit, schools out, you're all in the millions. All the life is pretty much in the millions, right? When you talk about how old the earth is, you're in the billions. First cell is 3.6 billion, right? So you have a first cell in here, oldest eukaryotic fossils right here, right? But then it, you know, really, when you look at the time-wise, most life is in the millions of years, right? And then you just have to remember, Speed limit, school's out, dinner time. So Paleozoic is between the 65? No. Cenozoic, Cenozoic is oh, the center okay. of your world okay. now, back 65 million years ago. And then further? Then further back in time would be Mesozoic, Mesozoic in the middle. Okay. And the key thing you know about Mesozoic in the middle is Jurassic Park, mm -hmm. dinosaurs, right? So you look on either side of that, reptiles were first evolving to the other end of the extreme of Mesozoic as mammals are early evolving, right? And then before, well, the Paleozoic, so as you're, you're, you're dealing with early, early cells up to reptiles evolving and up to gymnosperm. Yeah? So am I seeing the Cenozoic era as the time where you have the dinosaurs running around the Christmas Yes, dinosaurs running around the Christmas tree. I forgot about that, that's good. <laughs> Most of all life evolved during Paleozoic, right? You get all the way up to you know reptiles in the beginning of gymnosperm. That's a lot of life. Yeah, you're going from algae to gymnosperm, right? And you're going from single-celled invertebrate flat things all the way up to the beginning of the reptile. That all happened during Paleozoic. Lots of life happened then. Okay, and so close. Oh, one way to look at that is um, stromatolites. 
these what they they could just keep building the bacteria keep moving outer and outer and outer like this and just layers of dead bacteria below them and they become hard structure based on the chemistry of the ocean water salts and the mucus you know that they are making and the sand gets caught in there with the calcium carbonate in the water and it makes these hard rock like structures so just like when you cut a tree in half and you can see the rings and that takes you back in time when you cut these in half it's like you're going back in time with bacteria and these can even be seen from space they're you know so um, not so much big but pronounced I guess would be Indosymbiotic hypothesis we already talked about that are we golden pony boy bye sweetheart on that one all right and here Look, it's over there somewhere. I think it says active period. Yeah, so here's pre Cambrian and then what? Yes, right here, oldest soft bodied um, fossil. So you're in the millions at the end by the time you have soft bodies. Your first life form is 3.6 billion years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Or 3,500 million years ago, right? Yeah. Okay, and then you have Paleozoic, and then you have these mass extinctions in there. What do mass extinctions allow for? New, new, species. new species, evolution, baby, because you just cleared house and it makes room for others. Okay, here's showing you um, Paleozoic, algae to gymnosperms, and then like flat invertebrates all the way to early reptiles in Paleozoic. So a lot of life evolved during that time. Um, Trees die, pressure, heat, coal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, molecular clock. Don't measure time in seconds, but in the rate of mutations. If you know that typically five mutations occur every one million years, then how long ago did two organisms diverge if there's 20 mutation difference between them? Okay, four million years ago. Okay, so you can measure divergence by how many changes they are if, if your rate of change is continuous right if that rate does not change if it's all, it doesn't work unless you tend to have typically five mutations every million years or 20 mutations you know as long as it's consistent then you can kind of say well we've gathered this many differences between us right because like if you were best friends and every year you bought the same dress right but then you both went away to college for four years so every year then you had four different dresses and you know you got one dress a year and there's four differences in your closet right then you know, oh, we diverged four years ago. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Sorry. Okay. Um, and then this is showing you the Mesozoic era. So you have the beginnings of flowering plants now. You go from gymnosperms to flowering plants. And you're going from reptiles up to early mammals. And then Cenozoic, the center of your world now. These are mammals taking off all the way to humans in the last 30 seconds of our 24-hour clock. And plants. Um, angiosperms okay early primates these are showing you major extinctions again making room for other organisms and how are they spreading out maybe adaptive radiation right okay um, continental drift we talked about this as also giving evidence because when the continents were joined then you could have species going right across we have um, biogeographical evidence because you find that organisms are adapted to the environment in which they live. We know Antarctica wasn't always cold, it was in a warmer area, so it has um, um, reptile um, fossils within it. Mass extinctions, mass extinctions. I apparently felt like, look, meteorites, CO2 levels, continental drift, the end. And? One down and three to go. Yay! Okay, I'm gonna pause this and you can do the questions. Okay, here are the questions. I am very, very collateral <laughs> department. Wait, I got a 40%. I'm gonna take it. Oh god. The atmosphere in which life arose lacked oxygen lacked nitrogen. What's wrong with you? Hydrothermal vents. Which of the following is a reason why life does not arise today? It is an oxidizing environment. There's too much pollution. What's wrong with you? I didn't have time. Wait, wait, I'm Sorry. confused. Wait, if it's it was a reducing thing. environment oh, then, which was conducive to building. No Oxidizing it breaks it down. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yay. 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 Heterotrophs. Heterotrophs came before autotrophs. Fossils. Three point six. What you're looking at there is eukaryotic cells would be in the ones. Remember? What did okay. Okay, oh, can we go back to the other question?
Yep, I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it right now. That's those. And then here. I'm going to pause you for a minute. Pausation. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. But you know what? There's something with supercontinence too. Yeah. Yay! Okay, don't stay up too late. Goodbye, Big Idea One. We'll see you at the AP exam. Have a piece of toast.